The great European project, the dream of statesmen across the continent, is as safe tonight as it was last week and as endangered as it was last week after Spain yesterday chose a new government. It thus became the fifth member of the euro to dump its leader to save its status. In these troubled times when politics and economics seem to collide, it's time to reach for a senior European semiotician, specifically for Umberto Eco, the 79-year-old author of In the Name of the Rose. It was his first novel that made Umberto Eco internationally famous. The Name of the Rose sold millions of copies around the world and was made into a film starring Sean Connery. He has strong views about his country's place in Europe and was an outspoken critic of Silvio Berlusconi's government. His new book, The Prague Cemetery, is set in 19th century Europe and describes a world of plots, fear and paranoia and the rise of anti-Semitism. Umberto Eco, your, the wellspring of this book is anti-Semitism, bigotry and suspicion and false accusations. And forgery. And forgery. That climate of suspicion in Europe, do you think it's as great now as it was? If you, if you are thinking of uh, racism yes. uh, and of uh, the universal plot paranoia, well, there are two different, uh, two different uh, aspects. I would say that uh, racism has lost uh, the, the violent forms it had before the, the Second World uh, War. But when you look at Europe itself, it's only going in one direction, isn't it? What is the ultimate destination of the European project, do you think? I believe strongly that there is a European identity. Uh, maybe uh, when you are in Italy or I'm here, we don't feel it so strongly, but if we both are in New York, immediately so, we discover yeah. that we have something in common uh, in respect uh, to, to, to Americans. So now uh, the problem is, is linked not to cultural or ideal reasons, but to economical reasons. So I don't know how much the euro can survive or not, and I am not competent. But do you see at the end of this process of European coexistence and then cooperation and then development of economic union and so on, do you see a single state at the end of it? No, because I, I think that the national states, uh, England, uh, France, uh, were a product uh, of, the, of the Middle Ages, more or less. Uh, and today they are less important than before because it's more important the jumelage, uh, the twin the, between a city in uh, Poland and another in Spain with common interest, the connection. I see rather a sort of archipelago of interconnected uh, situation than not certainly a unique state. Do you think then the single currency, the euro, which we are now told can only survive if there is fiscal union, monetary policy union between the member states. Do you think that was a mistake? Listen, this is a precise uh, economical question. But it's not just economical, For, for is it? me, it's not a mistake. I feel very comfortable, but it doesn't mean anything. In the, this one. But it is, has, it, you say it's an economical question, but it's a political question too. It's an economical and political it, question, but I am not in the position of saying if that was really a mistake or if it has a future. But what's very interesting for those of us in this country, of course, is that your country now has a government the cabinet of which includes not one democratically elected figure, and that is made necessary by the existence of the euro. So it's a, it's a project which has political consequences. We find it in this country unimaginable that we could have a government where no one is elected.
Was Kissinger elected by the American people? No, but that's an entirely different Was system. Condoleezza Rice elected? No, that's it. So those, there are a lot of government those are made by technical. Sure, but there's a presidential appointment. That's true, that's true. It's and a different fact, system of we government. Are, we are in an exceptional situation. But I am very happy you don't have the Berlusconi in your country, maybe in the next future, but if not, you, you were obliged to find the same solution. <laughs> well, yes. Now, how could your country put up with Berlusconi? Hmm? How could your country, Italy, put up with Berlusconi? How could you tolerate Berlusconi? Berlusconi was a genius in communication. Uh, even his blunders were calculated to reach his target, and his target were middle-aged persons, ladies and gentlemen, who watch television. And they are enough to make up a majority. Why does Italy put up with this succession of governments of varying degrees of competence or embarrassment? Italians don't have a strong sense of the state. That's uh, absolutely true. Would you join a government of technocrats if you were invited? That's not my job. What do you, I'm saying, if you were invited, would you join it? If I were an, an expert and I were invited by Mr. Monti, probably yes, in order to serve my country in a democratic way, since I have the, the, the guarantee of the President of the Republic. Better, okay, thank you.